You're watching News on the Hour on Plus TV Africa. A popular sentiment is that African countries should support each other if they are to bounce back fast after the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic, which has paralyzed the global economy. With a continent's immense wealth and resources, including labor, it is believed that Africa can easily achieve economic freedoms without having to rely on aid. With the launch of the operationalization of the African continental free trade area likely to be pushed from July 1 date, the continent will have to wait longer to see the impact of open borders and the free movement of goods between countries. We are now joined by Fumi Oyetunji, MD Abitus Financial Services. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Okay, th there are some familiar statements. I would like to get uh, some contextualization. Now, the African countries should support each other if they are to bounce back fast after the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, which has paralyzed the global economy. Why is this not a given that we should support each other? Well, uh, apart from the political will, let me first of all say that the pre-existing conditions of weak economies, spiraling sovereign debt, and deficient infrastructure means that most of the African countries, especially the sub-Saharan ones, um, have felt and will each feel the post-COVID-19 impact in a different way from the first world, where they have capacities and institutions that would help them flatten the effect of COVID-19. It is therefore likely that it will be each country to their own as the problems will be different in each country and will be differently managed. Unfortunately, managed without uh, proper cohesion of policies. So each country would be dealing with their own problems. So the support of other countries will be difficult and should not really be expected. Okay, the continent has immense wealth and resources, including labor. At first, it can easily achieve economic freedoms without having to rely on aid. That's another um, quote you would like some you know, understanding. Is it, is it really that so? Oh, well, um, that's the theory. We have immense wealth in resources and labor. But the reality is that to tr transform such resources and labor to the achievement of development and economic freedom requires long-term planning and good governmental structures and institutions to ensure continuity of implementation. That is lacking here, as you know. Um, leadership, there's a shortage of committed and expert managers of economic development. Also, uh, for our immense wealth in resources and labor, to transform to economic um, gains, we need leaders who would negotiate well on the World Trade uh, a platform for, 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 for Africa. But we actually don't have such leaders, either because of lack of expertise or indeed corruption, where people negotiate for their own vested interests rather than for the continental and for their countries. Why is it that we're still talking about a proposition more than 60 years after independence? What more will it take to get things moving? You see, uh, the journey of 60 years started on one day and um, what would help or what should have helped should have been visionary leadership who would have known that we came out of colonialism and who would have been able to plan, you know, five-year plans 
20-year plans, 30-year plans, and 60-year plans with uh, a vision of uh, arriving at today in a better form. But you and I know that that has been lacking in our leadership. In 60 years, we have had layers of governments, military, and in the past 21 years, uh, democratic, or what we consider to be democratic. But with the performers in the military era still being the ones in these democratic uh, circumstances. So when you consider that, and the quality of the people who we call leaders in our country, uh, in comparison to even a neighboring Ghana, you can see why we have not moved in 60 years. There's no continuity. Each government comes in and goes in a totally separate direction from the last government. So that is why we're still here today. Right. Unfortunately, we are still in that terrible, vicious cycle. Thank you very much uh, for your insight on the news this afternoon. Thank you for having me. Uh, that was the MD of uh, Abitos Financial Services, Fumi Uyetunji. We're also now being joined by the Chairman, Oil and Gas Sector Association of Ghana Industries, Kwame Jantua. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So, in your years of business and professional practice, what are the low-hanging fruit when it comes to African collaborative trade? Well, much of inter-African trade consists of uh, consumables, food, drinks, tobacco, sugar, capital, textiles, and even textiles, we're getting it from India and China. Um, the challenge we've had is that industrialization in Africa at the present moment is non-existent. And if it were to be existent, then into African trade it will be boosted. So let me give you a typical example. Nigeria imports a lot of salt from Brazil. There are two countries in West Africa that have natural salt deposits, Senegal and Ghana. And we haven't developed our salt industry here. Nigeria can take all Ghana's salt uh, uh, manufacture if we were to develop that. And you can, you, you can see how much jobs that would be able to um, uh, uh, generate. Apart from that, Nigeria is a mature oil country. Ghana and other oil countries in West Africa are nascent, the, the new countries. How many petroleum engineers have come to Nigeria from these countries to train? No. We go to America, we go to Britain, and in that way, that's capital flights going. And so we really haven't been able to get this union together. I'll give an, another example. Nigeria at the present moment is doing 200, uh, 200 uh, million barrels a day, like 2 million barrels a day of oil. But where do we get our refined petroleum products from? We import. So we send our crude over to Europe and America and other parts of the world, and they sell it back to us in refined petroleum products at a higher price. And not until we are able to make sure that we can get this in place, the low-hanging fruits will never come to us. Then I ask the question, we have the AU. What do the AU really do? When you compare the EU to the AU, you can see the EU has a huge control over trade within the EU countries. What about the AU? I don't think we see that. And so it's, it's going to take some time and it's going to take a lot of Okay, I, I think the audio is getting well, bad. Can you hear me? That's for me right Mr. Said. It's going Mr. to take Gentua, can you hear me? Who have I can hear you. 
Okay, uh, the network is dropping a little, but let's see uh, if we can get your thoughts quickly. Uh, we just had a guest who spoke on some of the challenges Africa face in trying to support each other um, to grow and how we can move uh, from after this COVID-19 pandemic. What would be your reaction to some of her submission? I think we have to come together to be able to make sure that the resources that Africa has, we can use it effectively. Because one of the major challenges we have in Africa is lack of financing. And I don't think Africa needs to go out there to look for billions of dollars. We can generate those billions of dollars here in Africa if we cooperate and work together. Africa has 30% of the world's natural resources. We have it all. We have sugar, we have salt, we have uranium, we have uh, silver. We have all these products. I don't understand why we can't work together to, to generate the kind of incomes we're looking for to make Africa grow. I'm really sorry. We have to end the conversation now. The network is really, really bad. Thank you very much for your thoughts thus far. Hello.